I'd like to thank my patrons for their generous support. It helps to make my research, writing, and videos available to everyone. If you enjoy my videos, please like them, share them, and subscribe to my channel. And if you want to support my work, then please visit my Patreon page and look into becoming a patron. The link is below this video. Modron means Great or Divine Mother. But although she seems to have been known in Britain, there are no inscriptions to her. There are a few references to her as the mother of Mabon in early Welsh texts, so let's take a look at those. In the story Kilch and Alwyn, King Arthur and his men need to find Mabon, so that they are able to hunt a great boar called the Turch Trith. This hunt requires a special hound, which only Mabon ap Modron can control, but unfortunately Mabon is missing. These are the two quotes which identify Mabon and Modron as mother and son. There is no hunter in the world who can handle that dog except Mabon, son of Modron, who was taken from his mother when he was three nights old, and no one knows where he is or what he is, whether he is alive or dead. And then, a little later in the story, this question is asked repeatedly as Arthur's men search for him. Do you know anything about Mabon, the son of Modron, who was taken on the third night from between his mother and the wall? That image of the child stolen from between his mother and the wall is very evocative. In the story of Kilach and Alwyn, Mabon is finally found to be imprisoned. Because of that, he is sometimes considered to be synonymous with another stolen child, Pryderi, the son of Hrianon, who is missing and later imprisoned in his story. Due to this similarity, there have been suggestions that Hrianon is a reflex of Modron, or vice versa. I don't personally see them as the same, although I can't discount the possibility of some kind of mystical relationship. In the poem Who is the Doorkeeper, from the Black Book of Carmarthen, there is another reference to Mabon and Modron, and a few lines later, Mabon, son of Mecht, is mentioned. Many scholars think that Mabon ap Mecht is another name for Mabon ap Modron. Mecht means lightning, which could indicate some kind of divine father figure for Mabon. We'll come back to this in a moment when we look at Matrona and Maponos on the continent. Mabon ap Mecht gets a similar brief mention in Kiloch and Alwyn, where he is placed with Gwari Gwalt Airin, Gwari is also considered to be synonymous with Rhiannon's son Prederi, and this adds a little weight to there being some relationship between Rhiannon and Modron. In the Welsh triads, triad number 70 says that Modron is the mother of twins fathered by Irian of Reget. This particular triad is listing multiple births among Irian's kin, but the other births only involve mortals. The part that refers to Modron says, Owain, son of Irian, and Morvev, his sister, who were carried together in the womb of Modron, daughter of Avathach. Irian was a historical king in the 6th century. He and his son Owain have a lot of legends surrounding them. Notice that Modron here is called the daughter of Avathach, who is an otherworldly king or deity, perhaps associated with apple trees, which are very significant in the other world. Figures who may be deities are often listed in old genealogies as ancestors of kings, and this is true of Avathak and the line of kings that Irian came from. This next quote is from a manuscript called Pennyarth Manuscript 147, which deals with place name lore. Although this tale is placed in Wales, it's quite possible that the story actually originates in Irian's territory of Cumbria. In Denbyshire, there is a parish called Llanveris, and in that place there is the Ford of Barking, and in ancient times the hounds of the country came together to the edge of that ford to bark, and no one would dare to go see what was there until Irian Reged came. And when he came to the edge of the ford, he saw nothing but a girl washing, and then the hounds stopped barking, and Irian seized the woman and had sex with her. And then, she said, God's blessing on the feet which have brought you here. 
Why, he said, because a destiny was placed on me to wash here until I begat a son by a Christian. I am the daughter of the king of Anavan. Come here at the end of the year, and you will receive the boy. And so he came, and he received there a boy, namely Oain ap Irian and Morvith Ferk Irian. Now we see Motheran called the daughter of the king of Anavan, the other world, which certainly defines Avachlach's position. This picture of Modron as a washer at the ford who has sex with the king and bears him children seems to make her a sovereignty goddess, and it is worth noting that there are parallels with the story of the Morrigan in Irish lore. What we can't be sure of is which place Modron would be sovereign over, or of which river she might be goddess. But Irgen was sometimes known as the Lord of Hlaveneth, which refers to the river Lavenet in Cumbria. The Lavenet is a river with many fords, especially around Crosby Ravensworth, which might be associated with Irian. Staying in Cumbria, there is some poorly preserved folklore about a so-called fairy king, Eveling or Everling, and his daughter Modron. Everling is thought to be the same as Avathach or Abalo. The Roman fort of Abalavo, near the mouth of the Solway, seems to be named for Avathach, and based on the name, Appleby could relate to him too. However, it is these two sites further south which feature in the folklore. One is the site of a Roman fort on the dramatic Hardknot Pass, which is said to be Everling's fortress. The other is this ruined bathhouse at Ravenglass, which isn't very far away. Both instances mention this king Everling and his daughter Modron. All the orange dots on this map are sites connected to Maponos and Mabon. Maponos is usually conflated with Apollo in inscriptions, but elsewhere, like this one altar marked here in blue, Apollo is associated with Belenos. As we'll see when we get to the continent, Modron had an association with Belisama, who is sometimes considered to be the consort of Belenos. Of course, this altar to Belenos may not imply any connection at all, but I think it's reasonable to say that there is some kind of a connection between Modron and the continental Matrona, and between their sons, Mabon and Maponos. These statues of Matrona are sometimes called Nutrices, as they depict the goddess nursing a child. These are from the 2nd or 3rd century in Gaul. Matrona was a goddess of the river Marne, which is the longest river in France. It rises at Balem sur Marne and flows into the Seine near Paris. Balem is French for Belisama. Very nearby is the famous Sabinus Cave. A number of ex votos were once found here, which could imply an association with either Matrona or Maponos. This map of France shows the course of the Marne from Belem sur Marne down toward the Seine. You can also see the more numerous sites associated with Maponos, as well as some of the areas associated with a tribe called the Meldi. It's quite possible that these people had a tutelary deity called Meldius, a god of lightning. This might relate to Mabon, son of Meth, in the Welsh literature we looked at. So, back to Britain. Based on the work of the early geographer Ptolemy, it's widely believed that the river Ribble, which runs through parts of Yorkshire and Lancashire, used to be called the Belisama. Does that mean we should relate this river with Modron, because the source of her continental river, the Marne, is named for Belisama? Possibly. This map shows the Ribble, and you can see from the inset map that we've moved just a wee bit south of where we were with our Cumbrian evidence, but not quite far enough south to be in Wales. In Wales itself, you can see quite a few sites associated with Mabon and Maponos, and at this point the edges between Brythonic deities and Welsh saints begin to blur. There appear to be several possible St. Mabons, for example. Up here in Gwynedd, we get the beginnings of the story of St. Madryn, with a Y, in the 5th century. She was supposedly a princess, and the granddaughter of Vortigern at that. She was married to a king called Inner, while on pilgrimage to Bardsey with her maid, she and the maid both had a dream that they should build a church, so the story goes. This church at Trausvenedd is dedicated to St. Madryn. 
Of course, Welsh spelling and pronunciation was not all that consistent at this time, so sometimes she's just called Modron. Not far away is an ancient hill fort known as Garnvadrin, Madrin's Fort, surrounded by a cluster of related place names. This fort is also associated in local lore with Inner and St. Madrin. However, Garnvadrin long predates them. It was built on successively from around 300 BC right through to the 16th century. You can make out the outline of some ramparts here. This is from another angle. This lump on the top is the actual fort. Until the late 20th century, there was a baronial style castle at the foot of Garnvadrin called Madrin Castle, which replaced at least one earlier castle. This statue of St. Madrin stood in the entrance hall. According to the lives of the British saints, the local tradition was that Vortigern had once had a wooden castle here, and Madrin was there with him along with her eldest son, Caidio, when enemies set fire to the castle. Vortigern perished, but Madrin fled with Caidio in her arms to the top of Garnvadrin. It's probably just a coincidence, but I can't help seeing echoes of the Matronas of Gaul in this statue of the bare-breasted St. Madrin carrying her infant to safety. In the 20th century, Madrin Castle was destroyed by fire and demolished. Moving finally to Cornwall, where there is also a St. Mabin, we find that our St. Madrin of Wales has moved south too. The story being that after the death of her husband, she and her son relocated to Cornwall, where she is known as St. Materiana, which seems to be an attempt to Latinize her name. St. Materiana has two churches in Cornwall. This one is up on the cliffs at Tintagel. This is what it looks like inside. At nearby Bos Castle, the Minster Church is also dedicated to Materiana and was said to be her burial place. There is also a holy well in the grounds of the church. On the tower of Minster Church is an unexplained carving of a pair of shears. I imagine the explanation for their presence is something to do with the wool trade or something else equally prosaic. Still, Mabin at Modron's story takes him from Wales to Cornwall in pursuit of a boar, which has a comb, a razor, and a pair of shears lodged in the bristles between its ears, which he must capture. He gets the shears at the River Severn, but is forced to pursue the boar into Cornwall before he finally gets the razor, at which point the boar jumps into the sea and is seen no more. So, like St. Madrin, her son Mabon's journey takes him from Wales to Cornwall too. Still in Cornwall, in the town of Madron, near Penzance, we find the church of St. Madrin. Now, this saint is somehow reckoned, or was reckoned at one time, to be a man. However, the regendering of these early saints, who probably never existed anyway, isn't all that uncommon. And while the church may be named for St. Madern, the town is called Madron. More interesting than the church, though, is a nearby site associated with Madron, where there is another holy well, simply known as Madron's Well. There is a small cell-like chapel, with the altar still intact, and this clouty tree, which apparently has had this use for a couple of centuries at least. It seems likely that at least some of these sites associated with St. Madron were once associated with the goddess Modron, although it would be difficult to unravel the details after so many centuries. Every site seems to hold some echo of Modron and Mabon, but I'm aware that it's easy to find things that look like evidence when you look for it, but that isn't the same thing as proof. However, taken together with the texts from Wales and what we know of the Gaulish goddess Matrona, it seems that Modron has more substance than you might expect. 